so this is More Than Sunday. My name is Daniel Davenport. We're here to get into the Word. So I hope you have your Bible today. But before we do that, I want to tell you about something so important that's coming up. On February 20th, Pastor Robbie Booth is going to be here doing a marriage and family conference. And so if you are married, if you want to be married, if you're thinking you don't want to be married, whatever it is concerning your marital status, I want to encourage you. Uh, if you're in a relationship and then you want to work on it, come out February 20th. There'll be more details, but it's going to be right here on campus at the gathering place. Hey, well, do this with me. Open up your Bibles with me and say this out loud. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. Hey, I want to talk to you about something that I saw in uh, my journaling the other day. So here at the Gathering Place, we, on a daily basis, we open up the scripture, we read at least a chapter of the Bible every day, and we just try to see, you know, what we can observe from it and then how to apply it to our lives. And really, that's the most important part of the scripture. Uh, but I want to look at Luke chapter 21 with you. And in fact, I'm going to read a big chunk of it because I think there's something so interesting about this passage that uh, stood out to me and I want to share it to you because I think it applies to the times that we live in right now. So in Luke chapter 21, Jesus, he's at the temple and, and people are saying, wow, how beautiful this temple is. And, and Jesus looks at him and he says, you know what? Not one of these stones on this temple are going to remain standing on another. Like eventually it's all going to be torn down. So of course the temple to the Jew was a huge deal. And for him to say something like this, they were all shocked. And so, of course, the question is, what are you talking about? And, and, and really, when is this going to take place? And that's where we find ourselves in Luke chapter 21, verse 8. Jesus says to him, Take heed to yourselves that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. Don't go after them. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, commotions, do not be terrified. For these things must come to pass before the end, but the end won't come immediately. And so Jesus goes right in to start talking about wars and rumors of wars, and that though we're going to hear about all kinds of commotion like this and false messiahs in the end times, he says, don't go running after all these things and don't be terrified either because they're going to happen. So Jesus is saying that the things that you see going on, they're going to happen. And so you shouldn't be caught off guard by it. But he doesn't stop there. Listen to what he says. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful and great signs from the heaven. Okay, so nation rising against nation, ethnic against ethnic. That's what that word nation comes from, ethnos. Different ethnicities, different uh racial divides where there there is a group of people even within the own, their own border like here in the united states we might see ethnic groups going against each other well you'll see this around the world we, we have seen it and we'll be seeing it even more and jesus is saying that there are going to be more and more of these battles that are going on and i think it's so interesting because even in our culture in our context here uh, there is such a uh, push to make everything about racial division. And we saw it, uh, we've seen it over this past year. Uh, we've seen it throughout our history. Uh, very much is real in the United States. And we shouldn't be caught off guard by it. It's not good. But Jesus says, this is how people work. This is the brokenness of humanity. And this is part of the reason why he's coming back. But he says, prior to him coming back, these things are going to increase. There's going to be earthquakes in various places. And of course, there's always been earthquakes, but it seems that they're, they're accelerating. And then he says there's going to be famines and pestilences. So he's not talking about a great prosperous time. He's talking about a really tough time in our world prior to him coming back. All of that could be cause for concern. Yet Jesus says, don't be terrified because all of these things must take place. As if that wasn't enough, he says, there's going to be signs from heaven. There's going to be stuff going on in the stars. There's going to be stuff going on in, in the sky there. He said, uh, but before all these things, they'll lay their hands on you. Who's he talking about? On you, the disciples, on you, the followers of Christ. They will lay their hands on you and they will persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and the prisons. 
and you'll be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. There will be a persecution of the Christians. So the followers of Jesus, it starts off, as we've talked about this in the past, it starts off with just a warning about what you can or cannot say. Then it goes to a warning about what you can or cannot do. And then it can go into imprisonment and beating and ultimately death. This is the process we saw in the book of Acts. Now, what's interesting is the time that we live in. There is such an effort to not just make Christians accept people who are different or see things or believe things or do things differently. Uh, not only are we supposed to just accept, but now there is a push and a press that we must approve. And if we don't, then we'll be punished for it. And so there's all kinds of threats. There's all kinds of attempts to silence the Christian voice. These things must come to pass is what Jesus is saying. So when we see what we see going on, we can know Jesus was right. He said it's going to happen, but he doesn't stop there. So listen, listen to the conditions of the timing of his coming that he lays out here. He's, he says, these things are going to turn out as an occasion for you to give testimony. So settle it in your hearts, not to meditate beforehand how you will answer for I will give you a mouth. This is verse 15. I'll give you a mouth and wisdom with which your adversaries will not be able to contradict. They won't be able to contra contradict or resist. So I'm going to give you the words. Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit is going to fill you and fill your mouth. You are going to hear from God. And in these times of persecution, in these times where people are coming against you, I am going to use you and speak through you. So don't try to figure it all out. Just be listening to what I'm saying. And so he goes on to tell him this. He said, you will be betrayed by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Hold on. Jesus is not just saying that the outsiders are the ones that will betray us, but he said, even in your own family, uh, someone who is close to you. Now, typically families stick together through tough times, but he's pointing to a time where the divide will be so great, the division, the fault lines, the stance on righteousness versus sin, on heaven versus uh, earth, on um, scriptural authority versus man's authority. That divide will be so strong to where kids will turn in their parents, where a brother will turn in his father, you know, that kind of, kind of stuff like that. Uh, a son would turn in his father. He's saying that this divide will go so deep that people will turn on each other. And can you imagine that happening? I mean, look at how many families already have had a hard time even relating to one another and, and remaining civil with one another over this past year. There are some very important things going on in our world and, and they're dividing families. Can you imagine what it will be like, how bad it will be, how bitter people will be to turn on their own families? I mean, if we think about what's going on in the United States right here, where you are encouraged to report on a neighbor who is violating COVID uh, guidelines or report on a business, you know, that's like Russian KGB stuff right there. That's like Nazi, that's like Chinese communist stuff. You know, we think about all the things of the past, but in our own country here, in our own country in the United States, we are encouraged to turn on one another. Well, could that be the seeds to something far worse to where even in their own household, people are encouraged to turn on their parents or their other family members who hold to historic Christian beliefs, values, and truth. Jesus is sitting here and he's saying, this is the kind of situation that will precede my coming. Now, I know that typically when we come to the word, we want to be encouraged, right? So we're reading about some of these things. You're hearing about it. I'm talking about it. We're thinking, Pastor Daniel, that's not encouraging. I can only imagine the disciples sitting there thinking, Jesus, um, maybe we shouldn't have asked this question because all you're giving us is bad news. Well, Jesus says some good stuff here. He says, uh, after he tells them, you're going to be hated by all nations, uh, by everybody for my name's sake. He says, but not a hair of your head shall be lost. Not a hair of your head shall be lost. 
by patience possess your souls. And so what, what is he saying? I will protect you. Yeah, these things will go on in the world around us, but always remember you are not subject to the laws of nature like everybody else. You have a covenant with God. You have protection. You have the arm of God that is at work on your behalf. And so you don't have to fear these things. You don't have to worry about them. You have to, by patience, possess your soul. So there's something about our souls, that patience or that, that endurance, you have to be able to hold up under the pressure. Well, the only way to hold up under pressure is to, is to strengthen yourself over time. How do you strengthen yourself to hold up to these difficult times? Well, you build a solid foundation of faith in the Word of God. And so even as the same thing, we're telling people, be in your Word on a daily basis. Spend time with Jesus. Uh, be committed to the teaching of the Word of God, to learning it, to fellowship with other people. Be committed to, to connecting with other believers. Uh, don't back off on your connection in, in, in partnership in your local church community. Don't back away from these things because what they do is they build an endurance on the inside and they help us to overcome. He said, by patience, possess your souls. So that's how we will keep um, grounded during these times. Now, it would be amazing if Jesus just stopped right there. But when we, when we read the scripture, let, let, me go, let me go and continue a little bit with it. He said, you're going to see Jerusalem surrounded by armies. He's telling the disciples there in their context what they're going to experience. He talks about the days of vengeance that will come, that, that the nursing women, you know, they're going to be in bad shape. Uh, those who are pregnant, uh, there's just a great distress that comes on the people. Verse 25, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations. With perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from the fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Men's hearts will fail them for the fear of expectation. They're not even failing them because of health issues. They're failing them because of the fear and the expectation of the bad things or the tough things to come when the heavens are shaken. What does he mean when the heavens are shaken? Does it just mean the clouds are, are you know, rumbling? Or is he talking about the powers, the principalities, the spiritual hosts of, of darkness? When, when God comes in and begins to shake some things up here, when he begins to both loosen and set people free, but also execute judgment on those heavenly powers and principles and spiritual authorities that people have given themselves over to so that they can see that there's a lot uh, coming their way and their hearts will fail them because of the fear of the expectation of things to come. They may not think of them as spiritual things. They might see them as financial collapse, for example. Well, what would happen if our economy collapsed? What it would do is expose our reliance on mammon. Well, what's mammon? It is the God of money, right? That's the most simplest way to understand uh, who mammon is, the, the, um, the God of money. And so if our economy collapsed, you know how many people would be struggling with fear and anxiety over things to come. And he said, the heavens, when they're shaken, it starts to show up in the natural and people respond to that with fear. So if you're ever afraid of certain expectation of things to come, well, that'll help you recognize a little bit of where your allegiance or loyalty or trust is. And so you can look at that and then thank God for exposing it to you and then repent, and then come back to him. It doesn't stop there. Jesus goes on to say, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a, in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things happen, look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. So Jesus says all this to him, and he tells them so many terrible things that are going to happen. Now this is what I thought was really interesting. In first, uh, let's, let's move down. I'm going to shift to my paper here. So my, my scripture so I can see it. Um, in verse 34, after Jesus talks about all these heavy, heavy things, verse 34, he says, but take heed to yourselves. So all this stuff that is going on in the world around you, 
basically what Jesus is saying, it's out of your control. You take heed to yourself. This is a key in life anyways, but how much more so the times we live in. That if you want to survive and make it through the times that we're in, you've got to recognize what do you have responsibility over and what do you have no control over. And all of those things that Jesus listed, you have no control over. I have no control over. My responsibility in the midst of that is to take heed to myself, pay attention, and to be mindful of my own walk with the Lord, my own emotional, physical, and spiritual health, my relationships, how my disciplines, my practices, uh, my beliefs, my attitudes. I've got to take heed to myself in the midst of all that. And this is why. Lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and that day come upon you unexpectedly. Okay, this is what I think is really interesting. Jesus just gives a huge list of some really terrible things. And he says, take heed to yourself, lest your heart be weighed down with carousing. Or another version says dissipation, partying, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. Some versions will say uh, distractions. Uh, the message version says, and shopping. What, 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 am I, what am I seeing right here? Okay, all these heavy things that Jesus mentioned that sound terrible coming on our world. He says, but what weighs your heart down is not all those terrible things. It's what you do to cope. He said, be careful, take heed to yourself so that you don't start to try to cope and find comfort, hope, or escape in the carousing, in the drunkenness, in the distractions. So, so the pleasures of life, uh, anything that will try to numb the pain or uh, just completely distract you, the worries of life, like shopping. <laughs> uh, those are the things that will weigh your heart down. Now, what's interesting about this is when he says it will weigh your heart down. Well, what is it? It will depress your heart. So you can be going through all these things in the world and your heart become depressed. So there's anxiety of what's happening, the fear, but yet your heart gets depressed because of, not because of what's going on, but because of how you cope with it, how you deal with it. What are some of the biggest things that Americans are dealing with right now? Anxiety and depression. They're huge. Now, I understand about both of those things that some of it can be uh, something chemical going on in your body. You know, you need more vitamin D. You need more uh, men. You need more testosterone. Uh, all of us need to sleep more. We need water. We need to eat healthier foods. Stop eating processed foods. You know, some of these things can just be very physical and, and lifestyle changes. But a lot of depression can be a result of our hearts being weighed down or depressed because we're trying to cope with some things that really are some of them out, out of our control, some of them that are in our control, but we're trying to cope with them in the wrong way. And so what do we do? We're scrolling, we're scrolling, scrolling. We're, we're spending hours on TV or listening to the news or just uh, looking at cat videos. We're, we're giving ourselves more and more to hobbies. All of these things can, can have a positive uh, effect on our life in small doses. But what we end up, what we end up doing is avoiding um, what we need to deal with. We need to deal with the concerns of our heart before the Lord. We need to spend some time with the Lord. We need to make sure that our relationships are healthy, that we're having face-to-face -face interaction with the people we love, with our spouses, with our kids, face-to-face -face interaction with other believers, holding each other accountable. Uh, if we don't press into the Lord during these times and we don't fill our, our ears with faith-filled teaching from the Word and, and, and let uh, take opportunity to lift up our voices and, and sing and cry out to the Lord, then what will happen? Our hearts will be depressed. They'll be weighed down. We'll give ourselves to all these other distractions and worries. And just as he says in verse 35, for it will come as a snare on those who dwell on the face of the earth. It will come as a snare. The day of the Lord is what he's saying. It'll come as a snare. It'll catch people off guard. And if your heart 
If your heart is weighed down, it can catch you off guard. So what does Jesus say to us? He doesn't make it complicated in order to, to address this. He says, things are going to get tough. Make sure that your heart doesn't become depressed during the tough times because, you, not because of the tough times, but because of how you deal with the tough times. Understand that all of us will go through those times, but not everyone will be depressed during those times. It's how you cope or deal with these things that are so important. And those are 100% up to you. That is your choice. So I may not be able to change my chemical makeup uh, just by choice. You know, you can change your eating and maybe take some supplements or something. But there are some things that you can really change in your actions, attitudes, behaviors that will affect your joy and your strength. This is what Jesus says. This is his remedy for it. Verse 36, watch therefore and pray <laughs> always. Watch therefore and pray. How often? Always. Pray that you may be counted worthy or may receive the strength to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus says this. It's not complicated. Watch what's going on around you. But instead of medicating through and ended up drunk, you know, drunkenness, he says this, stay off the wine, right? People stay off the wine. That's not how you cope or relax. If you are finding that you need a glass of wine or two or six pack of beer or 12 pack to relax, uh, that might be a good indication that you're coping with something in the wrong way. And so he says this, watch, therefore, all these things going on and pray always that you would have the strength to be able to escape that which is to come and that you would stand before the Son of Man. Jesus is calling us to pray. Jesus is calling us to, to look at these things that are going on around us and to not back away or stumble in fear or anxiety and which could lead to the depression. But he's saying, take time to pray. When you see stuff going on in the news, pray. When you hear about stuff going on with your friends, pray. When you get news that uh, something isn't working out well for you, pray. When laws are being passed that are, they fly in the face of God, pray. When you are being uh, pressured to do some things or not do some things that God has, has said is right or wrong, pray, pray. You see these things going on. And what, do you, what is he saying when you, when you pray? Well, two things happen when you pray. One is you turn your attention to the Lord. You turn your attention to him. And so now my focus is with God, right? It's, it's with the Lord. And, and he's got my attention. I've got his attention. Another thing that happens when you pray, prayer is not just um, talking to God um, about problems <laughs> or issues. Sometimes it's talking to issues about God. Right? So there's a distinction. You can talk to God about your problems, but eventually, if you want to see these things change, you have a responsibility to talk to your problems about God. So, for example, Psalm 91 you know, tells us, no evil is going to come near my dwelling. No evil. So you're speaking these things. I'm declaring, no, I, I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, not one hair of my head will be lost. Well, I look at the hairs of my head. Uh, some of them are lost, but not because of the end times. It's just because I'm getting older. And my barber always cuts out these right here, and I wish he wouldn't. So we'll have to talk to him about that. Nevertheless, the, uh, the times that we live in here, uh, stuff's going on. We pray. We, we see what's happening. And, and we declare what the Word of God says to the issues and the situations that we face, Right? And so prayer is twofold. Prayer is me talking to God about my issues, but it's also me talking to the issues about God. So I'm speaking the word of God. You know what that's known as? It's spiritual authority. It's like what the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6. He says, you know, put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, having your feet shod with the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith, but pray always with the sword of the Spirit. Well, the sword is your weapon. 
and you're praying with the sword of the spirit, which means this, I'm praying with the word of God. You're declaring the word of God over the situations that you find yourself in. When you do that, what's happening? God is strengthening you. He's building you up. And so it doesn't matter what comes your way. You're going to be able to, having done all, stand, right? Just as God said to uh, Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. You start to read through the scripture and you see a supernatural God standing up on behalf of his people, defending them, strengthening them, providing them for them, guiding them, directing them through the most difficult times. We don't have to live through the times they lived in. We live in the times that we live in. They may, they may be different, but God is the same. And the same strength that was available to them is available to us. The same grace that God had for them, he has for us. The same God who went before them. I mean, before the children of Israel, a pillar of fire at night, a cloud by day. He delivered them from the superpower of the earth, the Egyptians. He delivered them single-handedly, provided for them in, in the desert. 40 years, even though they were not obedient all the time and, and, and uh, serving God wholeheartedly, he remained the same. And that's what we're being reminded of today when we get into the word and we open this up and we see yeah, tough times are here and more tough times are coming, but our hearts don't have to be depressed by it. What do we do? We watch, we see them, but we're people of prayer. And God is faithful to hear us and to answer our prayers and to strengthen us. I hope that encouraged you today. I want to pray with you that God would do exactly that. He would build you up in your faith. He would strengthen you, encourage you. Let me encourage you by saying this. If you need someone to talk to, uh, we've got people at our church who would love to pray with you, connect with you, and walk you through uh, hand in hand, you know, to the Lord, with the Lord as well during the seasons we're, we're in right now. So make sure you're staying connected. Reach out. Let's see what God can do. Father God, I pray for everybody watching and listening right now. I pray that you would bless them, strengthen them, help them to follow you, to hear your voice, to never back down in fear, to never be settled for depression, to always choose life, to choose you, to choose joy. In your precious name, Jesus, amen, amen. By the way, I mentioned our daily devotional practice. Uh, I, wanna, I would love to be able to walk you through the process to teach you how to do it. Uh, get you the reading, same reading plan that we're on here today. So you can email me at info at tgpchurch.com or come on out on Sunday mornings, 9.30 p.m. to the gathering place. We love you. God bless you. Remember, mark it on your calendar, February 20th, for Pastor Robbie Booth, our Marriage and Family Conference. God bless you. We'll see you next week.